those folks on Facebook will be starting shortly. Just wanted to make sure we were up and running. Can you check? Let's see that again. Hmm. Yes, it's live. Oh, there you go. All right. Good morning, folks. We'll start just a couple of minutes. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> oh, I can't do that and Hmm. Is this week two? We are actually still on the websites to know. We have not gotten past that. Good morning, folks. Uh, we're going to get started here in just a minute, but I needed to put that back on to uh, recording so I could go back to sharing my screen. We're going to continue with the uh, success, achieving success faster, just got a whole lot easier, 90 days to success. So we'll start working through this in about Two minutes. Do I have folks online here? Um, are you guys there? It looks like I've got two Daves, and Vion is also on. I'm going to take another vacation here, so I'll take you along. No. Okay. No, no. Okay. Okay. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to our Monday Mastermind here from Realty One Group Paradise Valley. Hi, Ami, I'm glad you could join us as well. Good morning. We've got people here in the office here and online. We're also streaming live to Facebook. This is a live broadcast, so um, be aware of that if you're asking questions. <laughs> All right, so we have worked with this a couple of weeks, and we've gotten through to this page here. Uh, we're going to actually kind of skip through this pretty quickly, but depending on who's here, if you need me to answer some questions, we had gotten down to the one zone. I'm hoping everybody knows what the one zone is. Uh, and if you don't online, please raise your hand or shout, scream, et cetera, and I'll jump through to try and show you the one zone. But otherwise, um, I'm actually going to talk just briefly about these and then move on to the next page. So in, Scott, in the one zone, you have your access to Skyslope. For those of you moving from another company uh, that had Skyslope set up previously, you may actually have to go to your other brokerage and have them remove you from their Skyslope. Depending on how that company takes you out of their system, you may still be stuck in Never Never Land with their Skyslope, not able to get onto ours, which we found out from some agents recently. So just a, a key point, if you're struggling with that, please let us know immediately. Don't just sit there and try to keep repeating uh, and getting access because it may be something bigger than what you are dealing with on your own computer. Uh, with Skyslope, you do have some new forms available to you. And I guess I probably should um, show that to you. Let's see if I can get over to this screen here. Let's share the screen again, but get to a different spot. Oops. 
Uh, good question. I don't know how to get out of that. Hold on a second, folks. Let me. There we go. All right, let's get to one login and get back to my Zoom. And now I can share again and get you into or not. Where'd my share screen go to? Wow, there it is. All right, let's go back into one login just so you can see what this looks like. Um, of course, you have Skyslope here. We'll go ahead and open that just so you can take a peek at it. And here, as I said, now in Skyslope, you do have access to Skyslope forms and other apps. You can see there's forms, DigiSign, and Breeze. Um, I can't see you guys online now, uh, but let me ask the people in this room, how many of you have used the new Breeze for your seller property disclosure statement? Any of you? None of you have. Okay. Um, I'm just going to click on this so you can see because they are expanding this um, as we progress. Um, this is a new fill-in form system for your clients because remember the seller property disclosure statement, you are never to fill that in for your client. The reason it has never been allowed to be filled in online is so that agents would not go in and fill it in. Mm -hmm. So they have created a new one that you can do by going to start new disclosures. Uh, it's actually going to ask you if you have a file. We're just going to pick this one since it's in there. I have no idea what that is. Um, but here's the point. You have this new residential seller property disclosure. Uh, they do have the lead-based paint in here, but folks, honestly, I don't recommend it. Have the conversation with your client. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, do you have knowledge of any lead-based paint? No, you don't. Let me check that box for you. Do you have any materials with regard to the lead-based paint? Let me check that box. There are two boxes to check. If you use this system, they check those boxes. Then you get the document back. Then you have to put it back in for signature. So it doesn't make sense when you can check the two boxes and send it through for signature. But you do need to ask your client if they have that information, okay? The seller property disclosure statement, the best part of it is they can't skip a line. They have to answer every single question, which normally if you've ever looked at the seller property disclosure on behalf of a buyer, you're wondering, oh, there are a whole lot of things missing here. Why didn't they answer this? <laughs> what happens is you as the agent are triggered if they miss a line um, or, and they're able to ask a question like, why, what, what does this have to do with my property? And you can go back and forth, but ultimately they have to fill in every single line. That is the beauty of this. I do love that because truly the questions are, do you know about and if you're asking your agent about it, you probably don't know the answer because the answer is, do you know? Obviously, the answer is going to be no. If you're going, what is this? Well, then you don't know anything about it, okay? They are working on the HOA addendum. Won't this be nice? <laughs> Sellers, please gather this information and get the form back to me. Here you go, you have to fill in the whole front page. Let's hope they're novel enough to realize they can only fill in the front page, but we'll go there. Again, these documents do not get signed. They are filled in by your clients and then sent back where you have access. You're going to have to download them, add them back into your signing program to get your clients to sign them. There's no way for them to take them off. So they um, come back to you as an email attachment? They come, you have to come back into Breeze okay. to grab the document so when it's completed. It's you get a notification that it's completed, but you have to go back into Breeze to grab it. It does look like they have um, added these already because it does not say coming soon, which is nice. Um, these are somewhat simple documents. Um, residential income property addendum. Oh my gosh, folks, that one is huge if you've ever done a listing with um, an income property uh, to get the seller to fill that out will be a blessing. 
Uh, so you also do have the notice and disclosure. I'm not sure how much we're going to use that one uh, because that's where somebody has to type in that language. I would just be afraid that the client, whether it's a buyer or seller, doesn't know how to word that language very clearly, and you'll need to help them with structuring that language so it's not confusing. We want to use what they're telling us, but we need to make sure that it's in very clean and unambiguous language, which is the only problem with the notice and disclosure. Sorry, yep. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're just sending them a blank document. That's my understanding of this of the grain size, so you can't put there anything like that. So it's conversations by phone. So it's just a blank document. Correct. We lose kind of something told that. I mean, you can go through it by phone. Oh, you absolutely yeah. could go you also through it. Have to go through it at some point. Yeah. Right, um, but the seller property disclosure statement has always been That's one right. that that the seller, the agent, has never been allowed to do, um, and it's been argued that you know, I mean, the one I have done it once. I had a client that was elderly and literally could not. And by the time they were writing it, you could not read it. And I sat there with them and painstakingly over an hour and a half filled out the seller property disclosure with them. But normally, no, you are not supposed to do that. And the next question is because we're saying that nobody wants this and we need to sell it back electronically, um, is it traceable that they actually sell it out, not us? Uh, words, do I have proof that I didn't check these boxes <laughs> later on? Because like you said, we want it to be from the seller. Um, is there some sort of electronic data behind the scenes that shows that's a really good fill, it, fill this out? My client said that's a really good question. So the question, just in case folks online could not hear that, is is there tracking on that? Well, you'd have to send it pretty much to your own email address because it goes to an email address. So, so you track it. It should be able to track who is who it's going to. Um, so it stay in here forever. I guess mm -hmm. with that question, yeah. I believe it does. And that should be that should be that should be enough. Does, yeah. or does it does it somehow transfer into they complete it? Does it transfer automatically to Skyscope showing that they got my form, no. they completed it, and now it's over here in Skyscope? That would be cool. Um, I'm not on my. I don't. It's not coming up with my main. Because you would no. upload in Skyscope until it's signed. Yeah, that's right. So it comes back to you, and then you have to add the digital sign. Then you have to add e either the DigiSign or AuthentiSign, but yes, you add, the rest of your documents. you add it to the rest of your documents to go out for signature. So that tracing? It's like, it's just I, tracing. I'm my guess is there's tracing in this program because again, it doesn't get emailed to you; it goes back here, and then you have to go grab it. So, okay. Um, so there are more forms coming, so do watch for that. Um, let me get out of the breeze part of this if I can. <laughs> We'll see. Uh, maybe not. Is it going to take me out of here? I think it's um, it's not. Well, I'm, I'm in here and it has some old files from mm -hmm. 2020, 2021. So it's just. Have any new files? Mm -hmm. um, you can just say when you said I already have a file and it's not pulling them or create new. And if you click, I already have a file in it. Did you try putting in the address? When you click that, it comes with a file. Oh, it goes down to those. I don't know. Try create new and see what pops up. Um, and I would just try to put your MLS because it should populate it from there. Um, the question is, did you create it in Skyslope? Is the, fi the files in Skyslope? Good question. I don't have an answer to that. So um, let me go. I don't know why I can't get back into just Skyslope. That was it's just there. Okay, let me go back into Skyslope here. Well, I do have it open twice. Okay, so the apps, um, for those that don't know, you do have two choices when you are working on filling in your documents. You have both the Skyslope forms here, or you have Transaction Desk, which I showed you last week, which you can get through, through AAR. So forms is, this is an app. So what is very confusing when I talk to agents, they'll tell me they're in Skyslope and be looking for help. And then after 
two or three minutes of the conversation, I realized they're in Skyslope Forms, which is a different program. <laughs> Skyslope is our big file cabinet that we use for our office to keep track of all of our documents. Skyslope Forms is a program to help you fill in the forms. So again, if you're not familiar with this, I will recommend this and move on. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, you can create a new file and fill in the details for what type of property. Now, last week I did say I wasn't sure you could create a company. You can create a company. You can also create a first name, last name of the representative and their email. What I don't know and where I was still having an issue, if you remember this from last week, is on a trust being able to create the signature line, which was my concern. So um, that's just something to consider. You might have to go to Transaction Desk to do that. So uh, I'm not going to go through this again. It's the same type of forms we dealt with the last time. Um, let me get out of here if I can. And I don't know that I can. We'll just jump over to here. So I have Sky Slope here. So again, in here, you have DigiSign. So let's say you receive, you're the listing agent and you receive a contract back uh, or you receive an offer on your property and you want to get your client to sign it. You have the option to go into DigiSign. Again, this is an app. So you can go in and create a new envelope, right? So new envelope and you can set it up for clients to sign. You also have AuthentiSign if you are working through Transaction Desk, you can go into Transaction Desk and go to the little pen over here, which is assigning, and create a new one. And you can create a new signing. Okay. Whoops. Wow, oh, my keys are not right there. Oh. There we go. So you can create a new signing here. So an accepted purchase contract, whatever you want to do on there, right? So, and that will create a new signing in there. So you do have several options, DigiSign or AuthentiSign, both are free to you. You can use DocuSign, that's a paid service um, that you can also do that is a little more robust than these two. But either way, people ask me, well, what happens when my listing, when I get an offer on my listing, you know, how come everything isn't auto set with all those signature blocks? Well, because it's coming to you from an outside source. Somebody else is emailing that to you. It's not right now in the system. When you're creating the initial offer, you're in that system. And so there, the system is able to preset those signatures. You can you can train it, you can create templates and you can say, oh, I've got a purchase contract for the buyer or for the seller side. And you can create a template for that. I'm not going through that, but you can do that to help make your response time faster. Um, I definitely recommend you create templates on your buyer side to make it easier to make your offers. I'm I'm not going to go into that <laughs> today. But we, we, did, we did that this weekend. Um, so when you hear agents say that they can get an offer out in 15 minutes, it's because they've set those templates up. So all they're adding to make that offer is the specific buyer's information for what's the purchase price, how much down payment, how much is the loan, those little extras. Obviously, every single one, you're going to have to put the property information in. But it's the rest of it that is kind of routine. The more you can get that template set up for yourself, the faster you can turn out an offer if you need to. Um, and, you know, that's not as big of a deal right now when things aren't flying off the shelves. But I would expect, folks, you need to be thinking about that for February. I think we're going to see a, a re, you know, a, a boom when the interest rates go down and we start seeing multiple offers. Cause I don't know about you, but I'm hearing a lot of buyers are sitting just waiting to move forward. So I've gotten through these. Anybody here have any quick questions on these three or four Skyslope forms, DigiSign Breeze or Transaction Desk and AuthentiSign? Any questions here? Okay.
I'm going to move on from these. I'm going to close down DigiSign and AuthentiSign. So let's go back to the one login. So for folks that are not familiar, the next section of this, I'm just going to point these out. Um, if you're not following this sheet that I gave out last week, um, let me know. We can email it to you. But the next section talks about one suite. Um, I hope all of you are aware. If you do not have a website, you can have a website by this afternoon. You have access to one. Your one zone takes you to actually help fill this out. If you click here on one suite, there are two main components of one suite. One of them is the, um, well, I don't know what that is, but one of them is this website editor here, and the other is your contacts and leads. This is your CRM. We're going to talk real quickly about the website editor. I'm not going to go into this. Folks, there are classes on all of this. I am not an expert on this. It would take me way longer to direct you on how to do this but there are classes both in 1U and Rock University on how to set up your website. But if you did not know the website existed and is there, it is there. You can um, get it up and running in literally about 15 minutes. The key though for you to know is when you start editing it, it's not live. It isn't live until you make it live. So you can play around with it. You can set up additional pages for it that you want to see to personalize it for yourself. But the important thing is you all have access to your own website. Please take advantage of that. That is really important as you're doing your marketing. If any of you were on my branding class this week, you will know that the, the branding and who you are and how you represent yourself is a cohesive you know, part of your business plan. So you need to have that website so you can have people find you. I can't tell you how many times people call me for referrals and then they go out and look for who these agents are and they have no footprint. They're not, they, they don't have Facebook. They don't have Instagram. They don't have Zillow. They don't have their website. Folks, if you don't have that, how do you expect the public to know who you are and trust you, right? That's the first part of our business is trying to gain people's trust. So please take a few minutes and work on getting your website up and running. Now, if you have your own personalized domain, so let's say, what, what is yours, Wes? Baker AZ Realty. Baker AZ Realty dot com. com. So if you want to create your own domain, that you have to go buy. You can buy it from GoDaddy. You can buy it from Google. You can buy it from any place where you can purchase domains. There is a slight cost to go have somebody from um, the Realty One technology end to link the two together. I think it was 30, 30, $30, something like that, $30, $35. Very reasonable. So go out, buy your domain, then go online and ask for them to help to connect the two. Uh, but again, that is a great way to get that consistency with your image and who you are. All right, so CRM, let's just talk real quickly. I know this is not the next thing on my list, but it is really important since we're on this screen. How many of you are tracking who your clients are and are keeping in touch with them? How many of you in this room? Raise your hands. Okay. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. I really want to see who online is tracking, but I can't, can't get to that screen from here. So um, if nothing else, if you don't know what Excel is, <laughs> if you don't know what Google Sheets, it's, it's basically a spreadsheet. So if nothing else, set up a spreadsheet with your sphere of influence, your friends and family, your past coworkers, um, people that you know, people from your church or other religious organization, people that you are friends with, that you go bowling with, that you do uh, sporting activities with, or your kids do activities with, okay? Get those names down onto some list, okay? Um, you can take a spreadsheet and load it into this CRM. Again, I'm not going to click on that. It's just going to give me a basic, uh, and it's empty. So it's just basic tracking. Um, you then can track these clients, keep information on them, 
when you're sending them stuff. You can send them market reports uh, either weekly, monthly, daily. You can set it up for how often they get the market reports. You can set up specific listing alerts for them. And then you have access to drip campaign letters and drip campaigns. If you do not know what a drip campaign is, that is the way that we keep in touch with our clients with something as simple as um, holiday cards. You literally can have um, emails that are set up to go out at each of the holidays. We have a holiday coming up next Monday. So you can have a happy Labor Day or whatever you want to call the, the holiday, right? So the call, holidays coming up. So those are what drip campaigns are. There are different drip types of drip campaigns. You could have a brand new buyer that you're working with, and there is a sequence of drip campaigns for a new buyer to get them engaged with you. So those things exist out here. I'm just gonna click on this so you can see some of what the drip campaigns are. So you can see uh, for people that are not in Arizona, there is a sequence of daylight savings times, both fall back and spring forward that you can have sent out to people. Like I said, we have a whole series of happy holidays, Labor Day, so these things exist, you would click on this and have it set up for that particular contact, not all your contacts. You'd have to go in and select which contacts are gonna get this information, okay? So you can add new ones, but you've got birthdays, anniversaries, you've got buyer campaigns, checking in, are they credit worthy, selecting their criteria of what they want for the search. Here's your setup search, intro letters, you can set up all of these different uh, drip campaigns for your clients that you put into, uh, into your database. And by the way, this is only showing 25. If you look up there, there are 148 campaigns already pre-created for you. Use this system. It's there for you to work with. Now, let's see, how do I get out of that, of course? It's not giving me a backup. No. Well, I guess we'll go back to here. So um, let me go back into one suite real quickly. Oh, actually, I did still have that here. No, it won't go back. When uh, you're in one suite, if you're trying to get in there, there is on the top right, there is a little um, tab mark resource and it has videos there and about how to do everything. Of course, it doesn't tell you anything. Yeah, <laughs> just an explanation. But if you're on your own or he, went to, he doesn't go to that. But if you need to go back, the resources have all sorts of training videos and no. one sheet. Drip campaign videos? Um, I, I that's the one I got to figure out. There's drip campaign right. stuff. So that's, that's a great class. Yeah, I'm watching the Rock University. Stuff. So this was, I accidentally clicked the top box when I came in here. And this actually shows you how to create a market report and listing alert on the OneSuite CRM app. So here it's going to give you the step-by-step. -step, and you could do a click here to watch the overview. So if you go back to one suite though, what they were talking about is, oh my gosh, that did not go where I wanted to go back to. Let's go back to here or not. Let's go back to here. Yeah. So what Sarah's talking about is right up here at the top, it says resources. And if I click on there, there are training videos and docs for all of this with regard to that. And by the way, they're on the top here. One of these just said mm -hmm. your guide to mastering drip letters mm -hmm. okay. up on the very top. Okay, there we go. I'll okay. click that one. So, so if you click project. that, there you get your afternoon. So again, folks, there are little things up here. If you didn't know, you can click these little buttons. This automatically sequences through here, but if you're not watching it and you don't see that something that you're interested in, you can go through there. Are, Looks like there are eight different things in here. Um, and the OneSuite app is available on your phone. So you can take your client data with you when you are out on the road and be able to reach out to your clients, okay? Now, let me get back to, um, speaking of that, you also have the One app for your phone that allows you access um, and to share with your clients a Zillow-esque <laughs> uh, online, uh, on phone access to listings and properties. So I can't show that to you where I am right here. Uh, let's see, let's go back to the One app. Uh, again, if you're not familiar, these 
10 tabs are frequent. And of course, I have some that you're not going to have. You're not going to have the zone broker. But um, the 1U is our one university with our real estate coaching and self-help. Um, if you are on the 1U and you are not brand new to the market and want access to the tabs to show you what is recommended when this loads, um, please let me know if you're not able to access the surviving to thriving or the top producers and teams, if that's what you're ready for. Um, the new to the industry gives you a, a sequence of suggestions. And in fact, they're in this 90 day packet. A lot of those are in this packet to get you online here. If you're new to the industry, we, we recommend you click on that. Um, you're going to get your first items here, your first 120 days uh, business planning coaching course. Um, things to improve your personal productivity, uh, how to be fabulous on the phone. If you are talking to people on the phone, you need to understand how your voice sounds and especially to smile. Because if you're not smiling when you're on the phone, it does change the way your voice sounds. If you're not familiar with that, record yourself and test it out. You will find a difference, okay? How to build your database, overcoming your fear of prospecting, your elevator speech, Boy, I think this is probably really critical right now. And I would encourage all agents, even if you're not new to the business, to work on your elevator speech. What do you say when somebody asks you, what are you doing? Or for those more experienced, what's happening in the market today? Are you ready to answer that question? Out, How please. are you going to answer it? What'd you say? Out, please. Out, please. <laughs> I think maybe we need to have a, a, a Monday, not a Monday mastermind, but a, a, a Monday appointment where we can have people test their, their elevator speech, speeches with each other to just practice it. Because otherwise, you you know, sometimes you're like, uh, well, uh, uh, I'm, I'm in real estate. Glad you asked. Glad you asked. Uh, let me think about how I'm going to answer that. <laughs> yes, I got an it's unbelievable here. So there are lots of different answers you can have. All right, so let's see what else is on here. Let me go back to this. So this next section um, is talk. I want to make sure you click on this, your apps, everything. There are a lot of other things on this sheet that talks about websites and apps to know. Uh, and I'm not going to go into each of these. Each of these that are on this list, the Real Scout, Boost by HomeSpot, or Rate My Agent, are all available with tutorials. If you go into these things, look for the help on those programs to get more information about them. But if you are not aware of all these different programs that are available and tools, apps that you can access, um, there are a lot of them, folks. There really are. Uh, I highly recommend the Waking Up to Win if you're looking to uh, get some coaching advice. There have been some incredible presenters on that. It's really good. That's every Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. That's why I don't do anything on Wednesday morning here. Um, you do have Rock University. If you've not signed up for that, we've talked about it before. I talk about it a lot. You have access, and I'm just going to jump, jump in here real quick because you have to click to become a VIP member. If you've not done that, you need to fill this out and sign up. Of course, I'm already signed in here. But what you need to see here is that you have access to so many different things. They have created Canva templates for you. Um, all you need is the free Canva. You do not have to pay for Canva. There are training videos, market resources. If I click those, they'll take me down below. But if you just scroll down here, you already have social media posts ready and set for you. All you need to do is go in and edit them. You have a newsletter all set for you. You can either print this or you can save and email this on. You've got tips to using captions with chat GPT and information on how to do Canva video walkthroughs. I have not learned that one. That's something I got to figure out. There are all types of templates. Now, I want to show this to you, but I also want to tell you, this is not taking the place of our wonderful supporters of Lynn and Bree from Rock Title. They can help you do custom postcards and templates for you, or not templates, but postcards and materials for you that they can help send out for you. Um, these are if you just wanted to put something together for yourself 
and or work on some of the video stuff that you might want to put together. YouTube thumbnails, buyer templates, seller templates, you can do full listing packet templates. But again, uh, if you have not met with um, Lynn and Bree, I would recommend setting an appointment with them. There are all sorts of buyer and seller guides, relocation guides, things that you can get access to. It's amazing what Justin has put on here. He's got all types of websites that give you royalty-free stock images. Just a reminder, people, if you find a photo on Google, do not use it unless you know for sure that it can be used royalty free. Otherwise, that photo belongs to whoever took it. And trust me, we have ad agents get cease and desist letters telling them that they need to pull these photos down from the Internet. Now, if you took the photos, of course, then you have full right to use them. Um, I would recommend if it is a Realty One group listing, and maybe it's one of our multi-million dollar listings, you might check with that listing agent because some of those do have exclusivity in terms of not allowing them to be used elsewhere. So do job, double check that on some of those. I'm starting to see some exclusivity clauses come in. So the Altos market reports, if you have not seen these, um, I need to forward that to my Realty One group, but here is an example of this. This is a great program for all of you. If you are not on the Cromford Report, um, this is a free service uh, that we get through Rock Title. Um, usually it comes out, oh, here's the Maricopa County. It's giving you the Maricopa County trends right here. Again, with all of these programs on Realty One Group, please scroll down. There is so much more information below. And if you're just like looking at the top page going, well, that doesn't really show me that much. Make sure you're scrolling down because there's a lot here. You have a whole bunch of choices here that you can change. You can look at average days on market and look at this. Our average days on market are going down. That's kind of interesting uh, considering our, our amount of inventory is also going down. So that's a little unusual, but uh, we've got a lot here you can look at. Again, it started at medium list price. Um, but if we're looking at uh, average days on market, these are 90 day and seven day averages. So what's interesting is this is for Maricopa County, but I can go in and punch in 85028, which is right here at around the office, right? That's our address right here. And you can change and get that information. Look at the difference. It ticked up to a seller's market versus what overall Maricopa County was doing. Now let's look at the 85254, that magic zip code that so much, so many of us in this office are watching. And that went towards more of a buyer's market. So again, part of your conversation always should be with your clients. Yes, we can look at the big picture, but let's look at the close in market of where you're looking to buy or sell. What is your neighborhood doing? Not what is happening in Maricopa County or quote unquote, the state of Arizona or really the hard one is, but nationally I'm hearing nationally has nothing to do with Arizona. We've always been our own be beating to our own drum here in Arizona with our market conditions. So again, you can scroll down here. Here's your average days on market. Let's look at that median list price. It's been pretty flat, actually. Look at that. Since October to here, there has been a change of, gosh, 949 mm -hmm. to 965 on the seven day. And yeah, 940. I mean, it's it has not moved that much since October of last year. That's kind of crazy, folks. So this, this can be a very useful tool when you're talking to your clients. Um, you can also pull up price increased or price decreased. So that might be an interesting one. I don't think we're going to see that much activity. I'm uh, seeing a little bit of a decrease. Let's see how many of properties have increased. That should be pretty flat. <laughs> yep, it's pretty flat there. That's what I expected. So um, again, you can poke around here. Um, what's the inventory in 85254 right now? 
the inventory is pretty low, starting to go up. And that follows suit with what you were saying uh, before the meeting started is that we're starting to see a little bit of increase in inventory. The thing we haven't seen is the increase in buyers. So we're seeing less contracts and we're seeing more listings. So we'll start to see things shift a little bit more towards the buyer's market as we get more inventory and less activity unless we get some of these buyers off the side. And you can share the reports directly to social media. You can, yes. I'm sorry, up here, I don't know if you guys can see that because my screen's in the way. There's a share right up here. You can share this out to your social media accounts, to your Facebook. Make sure you've dialed in the one you want to share because uh, does it, it goes to what exactly is there or does it go to the live screen? Do you know? Yeah. It goes to that. So can you then, can they then play with sure. the? I think it's sharing it. It shares that. I don't I don't know if you can. I think if you change it on here, it'll share that. It may just be sharing a single page. So make sure you've dialed up what you want to see that you share. Um, you can also um, send this out. Like you can share it also to clients. So you can set it up to go out to your clients with your branding on it. So that is pretty cool to have an option for all right, let me see where I was. Let me go back to the login. Uh, anything else uh, that you can recommend, Julia, that I missed on the Rock University? Or we've got Julia here from our Rock title upstairs. So much stuff in there. There is a lot of stuff in there. And there's a lot of training available. So don't miss out on that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other ones, for those of you doing open houses, I highly recommend using the Spacio app. Um, if you have... You can use it on a laptop. If you have an iPad, it's really useful on an iPad. Um, and you can gather a quick data on people coming in through the open house. Um, and by the way, when you do that, it drops directly into your CRM. So they're connected. Uh, and again, that CRM is there for you if you don't realize it and it's connected to your website. So if you put any type of thing on your website where they're giving you contact information, that's going to go into your CRM that you have. Uh, let's see, what else is up here? Um, this is branding at Realty One Group. I don't, I'm hoping that all of you know about the branding. I teach other classes, so I'm not sure what I've done in this, but I'm going to jump on the branding site here. For those that are not familiar with this, this is incredible. Realty One Group has given you a full branding site here. This is, you do not need to be logged into our system to get to this, which means if you have a marketing person or you have a sign company or you have a print shop, you can send them this branding.realtyonegroup.com. And again, oh, it's going to tell me I'm on a mobile device. How about that? How is that even possible? I am on my regular site. Well, I can't show you that today. Sorry about that, folks. But scroll down. Um, the branding site has some amazing stuff on it. I've never had that happen on my computer. It's very odd. Um, but I'm often plugged into my own monitors. It says that when I'm on my laptop. You, I mean, if you plug into the monitor. I am plugged into the monitor. I know. Mm -mm. Yeah, it thinks it's too small. So you need to be on a larger screen. No. Um, I know I don't understand that. So let's see. Um, trying to see what else is on here. There are sign company options from here. They are out of state just as a tip for you. So if you want to buy signs in state, there are other places local, but we do have uh, deals with D signs. Um, DocuSign, that's the brokerage version. You can't access that. That won't be on yours. Epic Lending, of course, is one of our lenders. Uh, They're owned also by uh, Cuba, our owner. Um, if you've not met Barb, she's in our office usually on Monday mornings, and she's always here at our office meeting. List Hub, for those that are not aware of List Hub, when you take a listing, um, this gets your listing out there. Um, if you log in, you have some better information about the distribution of your listings, but I think it auto distributes it for you. This is just your ability to go in 
and see where it's going and where those clicks are happening. So kind of fun data. If any of you are working with engineers, they want data. So if your client is an engineer, get some data and give it to them so they can follow up and understand what you are doing and how you are keeping their listing at the forefront. Uh, let's see, the one app, this is on your phone. Uh, I don't know what happens when I click on this, if we can see it on the screen here. Um, this is how you, th this is showing you how to download the link onto your phone. Um, so you can open the one app on your phone and then you can use it to invite other people to use that app. Let me close that out. Let's see. All right, let's try getting to week one. <laughs> That's taken us uh, three days and I've gotten, I haven't even gotten to week one if you're joining as a brand new agent. So our, about it. it's a lot. It is a lot. Page one is like, what are all these places? Yes. <laughs> so um, for those that are not seeing the actual sheet that I'm talking about, this is our uh, coaching documentation that is for our agents. We have been working on this website, websites to know for brand new agents. I decided to use this even for a recap of some of our experienced agents because we found that some of them were not using some of the tools that were out there. Uh, and if there is anything that you guys would like to see us host a specific training on, although I will tell you that Justin with Rock Title does trainings on so many of things, these things all the time. Um, please let us know, though, we can get somebody in here, either from uh, the one uh, corporate office, they've got trainers, one of them came in and did that spot training during our staff meeting the other day, or we can ask Justin if he or somebody else there can do that. But so now we're on week one. Um, I have all of, let's see, 17 minutes. And so we'll try to see what we can work through here, because some of this all of you should be through the top part of this, which is to activate your license with ADRE. Otherwise, you're not a licensed agent practicing. Um, if you are renewing your license, which you have to do every two years with your um, CE uh, requirements, 24 hours uh, in two years, uh, just a reminder, please try to get those in, um, especially if the, if the last day of the month is on the weekend, you need to get those in before Friday because I have to go in and reapprove you. So if you wait till the weekend, your license will lapse, just so you're aware of that. Um, the last day of the month is the day your license may renew, but it has to get renewed through the department and they don't work on the weekends. So, I mean, I don't mind going in and jumping on and doing something, but the department isn't there. So please don't do that to yourself. Um, every month, uh, our front office administrators, Heather and Louise, are really on top of whose licenses are up each and every month. As you can imagine, with an office of almost 400 agents, every month we have licensees <laughs> renewing their licenses. Uh, so please keep an eye on that. I know they will alert you and say your license is due up. They do it 90, well, I think they do it four months out. Uh, and the first time you can actually renew is 90 days out. You actually can't renew earlier than that. So, um, and by the way, if you take, if you take classes um, before your license renews, the actual month of your license renewal, those will not count for the next one. Even if you renewed your license two months early, you cannot take any CE for your next two-year period until after your license renewal date. Yes. And, and the license renewal date is how many days post? Week of license renewal date? What month did you get your license? Well, let's just say, yeah, let's just say November. Then it will be the it will be November thirtieth, okay. two years after you got your license or renewed your license. So it's always on the month that you got your license in. So I got my license in April. Right, but you can start taking CE classes immediately. Immediately, okay, because I I took it. I started taking CE classes immediately, and two of them did not count because they said I jumped on it too early. 
Were you not licensed yet? No, I was doing renewal. Yeah, yeah, you oh. can't do it until after your renewal date. So nothing I thought it was after forward, is that what you mean? Nothing it's after, but no, it's after the the last day of the month. Okay. So if November is your date, you could not take a new class until oh. December first. Right. Okay. So yes, that's what I was just saying. If you renew it in say October and then start to take a class, that yeah. class will not count for your new one. That's why I was just mentioning, you would have to wait till December. Even if you do the renewal early, it you have to wait till the end of your your period, your month period that, that you renewed in. Okay, so the top of this is just talking about um, ARMLS, your associations, meaning your, your board of realtors, either Phoenix, Scottsdale, or we serve. Uh, getting your lockbox key uh, set up on your phone, uh, and then your new agent orientation, which is um, online. Uh, we have both recorded versions of that, and then twice a month, we offer the first and second orientation uh, training programs. Uh, visit One U and click that new to the industry. For those of you that have just started, you should have by now done your first 120 days video uh, and gone through that. Uh, if you have been in the business a long time and you've never done that, I would encourage you to go ahead and take a look at it. See whether there's something in there that you haven't done. Um, and then you'll see this whole next section is talking about branding. Why are we talking about branding with a, a new agent or with some of you that have been in the business a while, branding is so important. Uh, go back through, especially if you've been in the industry a while, um, go Google yourself on, um, uh, Google yourself on Google <laughs> and find out what pops up and how many photos of you are there. If you have not gotten a new headshot photo, maybe it's time and then go through and change that photo and all of your platforms. So there's a consistent branding for you. Uh, do you have a, a marketing concept? Is there, is there one phrase that encompasses who you are and what your delivery for your brand is to your client base? If you haven't worked on that, you certainly can can start getting that done. Uh, but if you are on social media, what is the what is the call to action that you're asking people on many of your uh, Facebook, Instagram? Um, how are you interacting with your client base? So we've got a lot of options here. Um, some of them talk about making sure that your profile and your photo is updated in the one zone. And of course, I'm going to go to this and mine is not going to be uh, because this is a new, sorry, uh, this is a new one for me. This is not my personal realtor site. This is the new one that I have as the broker. And so when I go into the one zone, you'll see on the upper left that it's going to say my profile is at 50%. If your profile is not at 90 to 100%, for those of you agents that have been in this business for a while, you need to complete that because when people go online and search you and come up with your identity with Realty One Group, this is what they're going to see and it's not going to have a photo in place. Put your photo in there. Put your description in there. Who are you serving? What is your passion? What is of interest to you? How can people online connect to you? Do you like basketball? Do you like golf? Do you follow the Cardinals? Doesn't really matter, but find something that people will have a connecting point, okay? Do you like to hike? A lot of people love to hike. So different things like that are really important, but go in and edit this. It gives, you know, I'm I'm saying what your hobbies are. That's why I'm saying it because I know these things are listed in here. What's your bio, your image, any of your designations, your hobbies, your specialties? How many languages do you speak? We have folks in this office that speak dozens of different languages. So if you're looking for somebody that speaks a specific language in your profile here, 
online, people can search that they're looking for somebody that speaks Farsi, somebody that speaks French, somebody that speaks Spanish, and your the agents will pop up with those language specialties. So if that is something that you have, share that with people. It's really important for you to have that type of information there so that the general public can find it. Um, I've got just a few minutes left here. I've gone through uh, most of this. Uh, I definitely would take a few minutes for those of you that have been in the business. Again, as I said, um, Google yourself. Uh, is anybody willing to let me Google them here? Nick? Sure. How do you spell your last name? A-F-S-H-A-R-I. F. -S -H -A -R -I. F at A F S H A R I. All right. So Nick popped up here. Look, number one and number two are both, I'm sorry, Instagram and then the Realty One group are the first two that popped up. Is this one you as well? Yeah. So that is ideal. That's what you want to see, of course. But right. So the the thing is, though, he does have a very unique name. <laughs> yeah. My name is my name is serial killer That's pops right, up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we can we do yours? Wesley Baker? Yeah, Baker. it's actually a serial killer. What did you do? It's like right. Yeah, that that's not so good. So uh, you're gonna have to work on that one. I got married. Yeah. If you put mine in, a pole dancer came up. I have. If you do my other version, Wes Baker, it's this guy that had like ripped abs. I'm pretty sure he's uh, I don't know something. Just Photoshop model. Your, your there you yeah, go. There's the ripped abs. Other version. She's like, are those your abs? I was like, I wish. So what you can do, if that's the case, just to make sure about your your um, unique profile, whoops, go back in and put real estate, right? And, and I'm cheating on that, but what I want to see is when it does come up with a realtor, is it picking all of yours up? And now, of course, he is, this is all his. Now, for those that don't know Wes, he got his license a month, about a month, yeah. about a month ago. So all of these things are popping up, right? So he already has his Realty One uh, website up and running. He has gone in and edited his Realtor.com. For those that don't know, Realtor.com has a website for you. It's already there. If you don't edit it, then people are just getting this generic realty realtor.com info that they have and not your info. So go in and fill that out. Um, this is his uh, other website. So do these go to the same place? They do, right? If I yeah, click this. Should. yeah. So if I click this, this is going to go to the Realty One site. Did I click it? Yeah, there yeah. we go. So this is going to go to the same site. You can see that this is the Realty One group site. He's got the market reports that come in here. He's customized them so that they're for specific areas. Everyone is given this, what's my home worth? This is a uh, really cool little tool that people can use. It's, a, it's a, um, uh, an automated valuation of your property, which means it's not that great, but it gets the conversation going. Uh, you've got property search in here. So uh, you pulled down just listings. That's the only thing you pulled that off. Of there. I still got to work on the website. I right. just have so, the okay. main template. And... But look, he put, he filled in the about me. Here are the featured listings. He's got those four searches. So they automatically drop in to that the featured listings so people can find them there. But that website pretty much is already there for you. You just have to edit it for yourself. So let me go back. Um, and again, you can click this one or this one, and you're going to get to that same site. I'm not going to click index my old Instagram. Then, so I updated the, the handle. Is this your it's old good. one? Yeah, that's the old one. So I'm, oh, I'll click it real quick. I'm curious. If, oh, no, wait. It maybe that's construction. No, the construction is. That was my old one. No, that's not me. <laughs> that's the other West Baker. So that's my that's my uh century century twenty one like counterpart. My main competitor. <laughs> well, that's pretty incredible that that's your main comp competitor, and you still I'm came up yeah. in all four of these tops. I wonder if or three of these top. Arizona, though. 
That could be. It's probably showing you local first. And then mm -hmm. I don't know how it works. It's all right. Yep, you may want to let him know that you're, and he's got the dot, he has the dot realtor. Yeah. Um, so, well, maybe I'll buy his, uh, send him off. <laughs> How much is it worth? So, um, any questions from people here? Let me stop sharing my screen and that way I can see people online. Um, oh, look, Wes is also online. Ami, are you trying to talk to us? You need to unmute. Nope, she's on a different conversation. Uh, that's right. So anybody online? Scott, did you have something? Un unmute. No, you're good. All right. Anybody else online have any questions? Your mic is open. You may want to close uh, yours. So. I don't think I... No, I'm not connected to it. Oh, okay. Um, anybody else have any questions? Otherwise, um, uh, next... Monday is a holiday. Enjoy Labor Day, folks. We are not having a mastermind, not getting up to do that and come into the office mm -hmm. that'll be closed. Uh, the following Monday will be something handled by either Rock Title or Epic Lending. I think we've got some yeah, art and um, art and, and Barb are, together. are doing yeah, so art great. with Rock Title and Barb with Epic will be doing something on that um, Monday morning, and then beginning the following Monday, which is the third and fourth weeks of September, I will skip away from this for a while. I'm going to do the buyer broker agreement and start working on the purchase contract. Those will go over several weeks. Uh, the purchase contract will not be done in an hour. <laughs> Um, we will start with the buyer broker agreement, though, so people understand that. And then we will probably get into page one of the purchase contract. I don't think we'll get past that on that Monday, but we'll try. And then the following Monday, we'll continue with that. Again, all of these programs are recorded and are put on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you have not gone on to our YouTube channel, please go on and subscribe. Uh, if we can get 100 subscribers, it makes it easier to find us. So we're hoping that everybody will go out there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this Monday morning. I really appreciate it. And you guys have a good week. Enjoy. Go sell some homes. <laughs> All right. A lot of information. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to